All right, so we're in 7.6 now. <laughs> All right, so we're we're going to uh, we're going to introduce this idea of moments and center of mass. Um, this we'll, we'll talk we'll talk quite a bit about this uh, during second semester when we when we get into uh, three dimensions when we're talking about solids uh, and we'll talk about different different kinds of moments. So what what we're what we're doing with moments is we're uh, we're considering a mass and and considering how far it is from a specific axis for, from a specific point or specific uh, specific axis and th this gives us some some one we, we use moments for, for various things in physics and two it tells us something about the property of the of the object itself if we're thinking of a if we're thinking of an object now just just to, so we're all clear mass mass is the property of an object that resists motion and we're going to talk about two kinds of moments. We're going to talk about moments about a point and about a line. And we'll, we'll make that distinction in just a little bit. And for all of these, for all of the things that we're talking about today, we're assuming that, we, that the mass, we can consider the mass to be concentrated at a point. It's not, it's not spread out. We can assume that it's concentrated at a point. So let's just define our moment about a point. Moment. <coughs> so if we have a if we have a point on the x axis, moment about a point is just we we use it. Use M, M there. It's just the mass times its distance from that point. And we call x, m is the mass, and x is the distance of that mass from the point that we're interested in. x is called the moment arm. And for a one-dimensional system, so if we have masses concentrated along along a line for example so if we had something like something like this and we're assuming that our masses are concentrated at a point and this is m1 m2 m3 and we have a bunch of points concentrated along this line and this is at distance x1 x2, x3, however many we have. So this is a one-dimensional system. For a one-dimensional system, we just sum the total moment about the point is just the sum of the individual moments. So the moment is just, and we'll call it m sub o, if this is, let's say this is zero, zero. So our moment about our origin, about this point that we're interested in, m sub o, is just the sum of the individual mom moments. m1, x1, plus m2, x2, plus m3, x3, plus however many masses we have. So for one one dimensional system we just we just sum each individual moment. And then we call what we call the center of mass. This is the moment about the origin. And for this system, the center of mass. And 
and the symbol we use for center of mass is x bar, is the moment divided by the total mass. And the center of mass we can think of as the point, if this were, say, masses uh, distributed on like a thin, rigid wire, and we have the masses, these different masses distributed along the wire, center of mass would be where that, where that wire would balance. That would be our, we could think of, that's how we can think of the center of mass. So if we just have a one-dimensional system, find the moment, we just sum the individual moments, find the center of mass, we divide the moment by, by the total mass. And that gives us the center of mass or, or where, we would, where we would balance. And we call, we'll, we'll make this distinction a little clearer a little later in the year, but we call this the moment that we're, that we're calculating, we call it the first moment. So what we're doing with moments is we're waiting something by its distance from an axis. So we're weighting this mass. We're giving this, this mass uh, a weight based on its distance from, from a point. And we call it the first moment because our distance is raised to the first power. We can talk about second moments and third moments, and, and each one tells us something a little different. So what we're talking about here is, is first moments. We could, we could talk about moments of other quantities. We could talk about the moment of force. So we're weighting the force by its distance from, from an axis. And that gives us, uh, what we rather than a center of mass, that gives us what we call a center of gravity. So if we talk about weighting the force by how far it is from a point, we get the center of gravity. That's a moment of force. Second moment, where we would weight by the second power of a distance from a point or an axis, gives us the moment of inertia. We can talk about moment of area. So we're weighting an area by its distance from an axis. Um, so each, each different type, we have lots of different types of moments. Right now we're just interested in moments, the moment of, of mass. Now, any questions on moments and center mass for a one-dimensional system? I think it's pretty, pretty intuitive and I think it's something that, that we all have a, have a little bit of a grasp of already. It kind of has an idea of how this, how this works. Now for a two-dimensional system, so if we have masses distributed in, in two dimensions, we can talk about two moments. The moments with respect to the x-axis and the moment with respect to the y-axis. We can also eventually we'll end up talking about the moment with respect to the origin. For right now, we're just interested in the moment about the x-axis and the moment about the y-axis or with respect to the x and with respect to the y. So for two two dimensional system, it gets a little more a little more complicated. So for two dimensional systems, we're interested in a moment about the x and y axis. And what this means is we're going to weight the mass by its distance from the axis. So for a two-dimensional system, we have our points, our masses, m1, m2, dot, dot, dot. We have n, n masses, m sub n. And they're located at these various points. x1, y1, x2, y2, dot, 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 for however many uh, masses that we have, x sub n, y sub n. So we're thinking, for, for a two-dimensional system, we're thinking discrete point masses here. We have these point masses located um, at these points. So our moment about the y-axis So 
So what's, what's the distance of each of these points from the y-axis? If we have this discrete point masses located at these points, what's the distance of each one from the y-axis? The x-coordinate. The x-coordinate tells us how far it is away from the y-axis. So we're just going to sum, and we say that the moment, the symbol we use is m sub y, the moment about the y-axis, is just m1 x1, and we're summing that, m2 x2, plus dot dot dot, m sub n, x sub n. So the moment about the y-axis, we just sum the mass times its distance from the y-axis, which is our x values. And about the x, well the distance of each of these points from the x-axis, is just what? The y, the y values. That's how far that particular mass is from the, from the x-axis. So we have m1, y1, plus m2, y2, plus dot, 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 however many we have. And then our center of mass, we're going to get a, we're going to get a point, an x-value, an x-coordinate, and a y-coordinate for our center of mass. center of mass is just going to be x bar y bar is our, our symbol is going to be m sub y over m and m sub x over m where m is the total mass. <clears throat> so for a discrete set of points in a two-dimensional system, we do just like we did for a one-dimensional system. We just have to consider our moments about two different axes. And our center of mass, again, is we could think of, we could think of that as if our, if our masses were, were connected by rigid wires that didn't have any mass, if we, if we put a tip of our pencil there, that's where the whole thing would, would balance. So with all this summing, where we're adding all of these up, where do you think our, our moments and center of mass is, is going to lead us if we're talking Integral. about, what's that? Integral. Integrals. So if we have something that's not a discrete uh, <laughs> collection of point masses, if we have a uh, something that varies continuously, we end up with we end up with an integral to sum all of these up. So questions on moment and center of mass for two dimensional for discrete points in a two dimensional system. Yes. So what exactly does it do? Whatever you find. Um, let me do the the talk about the development, and then we'll then I'll talk about. What, what this is telling us, okay? All right, so for, for what we're interested in for this particular, in this particular section is what we call planar lamina. So we have some shape in a plane and a lamina it just means a thin, a very thin slice. So we're talking about a, a super thin slice of this this planar this planar shape. So, and we're assuming that we have a constant density. So we have a flat thin flat plate. The constant density. We'll second, in, during second semester, we will talk about what we do with planar lamina that has a variable density. And our density, because we're talking about a thin, flat plane, our density is mass per unit area.
So we're, we're interested in, in how much, how, how the mass varies per unit area. And what we're going to be interested, the way we're going to work with this is we have, generally we're going to have our planar lamina bounded by two graphs, graphs of two functions. So here's one function, here's another function, this is F and this is G. And we're interested in the moment and the center of mass from two points. So we're interested in this, this region here. And I'm going to sketch in so. And I'm going to look at a little thin rectangle and this is going to be y sub i and this is going to be x sub i. So we want to find the, the moment and the center of mass for this particular region. And the way we do it is we divide our region into little thin strips. And we want to write an expression for its dimensions. And we find the, the strip's mass. And we find its center of mass. And then we're going to integrate over the entire region to find the mass and the center of mass. So for this, we're, we're going to make some we're going to make some assumptions when we, when we start finding our, our center of mass here. Now to find the mass of our region, our mass is just, it's just our density times the area. So we need our mass to find, we need our total mass to find our, our center of mass. So the, the mass of this region, the mass of this particular region, is how, how, do we, how are we going to find the mass? If we define our density, normally we use rho, the symbol rho for density. So what, how would we find the mass of this region if we're given this density? Mass is density times area. So I'll start out density, rho. How do we find the area of that region? Integral from A to B of F minus G. And I'll write my variables in. F of X minus G of X. DX. We know how to do this. The area between two curves. So this is, this is the mass of the region. So that's the mass of the lamina. <clears throat> so to find our to find our center of mass, to find our moments, we've already divided this into small intervals. If we call this thickness um, delta x. You guys will know this, this argument by heart soon. If, the, if we divide this into little rectangles, delta x, we know that our mass is f of x minus g of x times delta x, and we sum that over our region. And we are assuming, since our, our density is constant, it doesn't vary, we assume that the mass is concentrated at the center of the rectangle. So we assume that the mass is concentrated at the center. 
and the center, our coordinates of our center of our representative rectangle is x sub i, y sub i. To find the x moment, the moment about the x-axis, we need to sum the distance of each of each piece of mass that we're assuming that's concentrated at the center times its distance from the x-axis. Let's find the y moment, the moment about the y-axis. We sum the mass that's concentrated at the center times its distance from the y-axis. So the distance from x sub i, y sub i, to the x-axis is what? How do we find the distance from this point to the x-axis? What's this, what's this y-coordinate? How do we find this, this y-coordinate? I'm sorry? Go ahead. The average value between F and G. Perfect. So it's our, our Y coordinate is the average value between F and G. We're right in the center. So it's just F plus G divided by 2. Or we're going to say that y sub i is f of x sub i plus f of g or sorry plus g of x sub i divided by two. That's going to give us this y coordinate, and I'm just going to put in. For instance, here, that's our middle. I'm sorry? So that's our middle. So the moment about the x-axis, we sum this, the, the distance of this mass from its distance from the y-axis. So the moment m sub i, the moment of that little piece at x sub i, y sub i, is its mass times the distance is going to be rho times f of x sub i minus g x sub i times delta x. That's the mass of this little thin strip. It's just the area of the strip times the density times the distance from the y-axis, which is f of x sub i plus g x sub i over 2. That's for the total mass. So I'm, now I'm just talking about the mass of this thin little strip. Sure. This one? So our moment of this thin strip about the x-axis is the mass of that strip. And the mass of the strip is, we said that we found the density as mass per unit area. So the mass of this strip is going to be the density times the area of the strip. The area of the strip is the height of the strip, f sub x sub i minus g, g sub i, x sub i. That's just the height of the strip. Times delta x, times the thickness. That's the area of that strip, and I'm multiplying that by rho to get the mass. And then its distance from the x-axis is this y sub i, this, this average value of the two functions. So that's, a, that's its distance from the x-axis. And as we, let, as we let delta x approach 0, as we let the number of strips that we divide our, our interval into, uh, 
go to infinity. This suggests that our planar lamina that m sub x, the moment about the x-axis, is rho times the integral from a to b of, and I'm going to just rearrange this, f of x plus g of x over 2 times f of x minus g of x times dx. This is our distance from the, y, from the x-axis. This is our area of our little strip, and we're summing that over the entire region. And let's look back here. If we're integrating with respect to x, what's the distance of the center of this mass, of the mass of this little strip from the y-axis? How would we write that in terms of x? Just x. Our distance of this little strip from the y-axis is just x. We've just gone over here, x units. So our moment about the y, a little easier expression, moment about the y-axis is rho, the integral from a to b of x times the area of that little strip, f of x minus g of x dx. And our center of mass, x bar y bar, is just m sub y over m and m sub x over m. And m was our integral of rho times the integral of rho times f of x minus g of x. So to find our center of mass, we need to find, for a planar lamina, we need to evaluate three integrals. We need to evaluate an integral to find the mass, an integral for the moment about the x-axis, and an integral to, to find the moment about the y-axis. Our center of mass, what we, for, is, if we took that planar lamina, and we found the center of mass, if we took our pencil and set that planar lamina on the, on the, center of mass, that planar lamina would balance at that point. So that's, that's one reason that we're finding the center of mass. Another reason we would find the center of mass if we're talking about a shape in physics, we assume that the mass is concentrated at the center of mass. So if we're, if we're doing some kind of analysis where we're do, talking about the motion, we can assume that the mass of that planar lamina is concentrated at that point, and that's easier than thinking about the whole shape. So that's one reason we do. What is the moment, the moment is just, uh, it's, you're thinking of how, how the mass is distributed through the shape. So the, the, further, the further away the mass is from your axis, the bigger its moment is going to be. That's, that's one way to think about the moment. All right, I don't have time to do an example. Maybe uh, I can record an example of finding the, the center of mass of a planar lamina, and I'll post that on my website. There you go. Um, and one other thing about moments and center of mass, when we have a constant density, like we're talking about with planar lamina, we call the moment of the, the center of mass the centroid. The centroid is usually thought of as a property of the shape. So the density is, is constant. So the centroid is a property of the shape. When we have a variable density, then the center of mass also has to do with the material. So then that's usually when we use center of mass. 
So you'll see the term centroid and center of mass kind of used interchangeably. Centroid is usually referring to a, a shape with a uniform density, so the centroid is a property of the shape. And I will post up an example of a calculation uh, this, by this afternoon. 